Hello everyone, welcome to Snack Chats. Halloween's over, Terry's in Smash Brothers, and we still have one more month of pumpkin spice season. Today, we are gonna be talking about the Amazon exclusive series that people probably missed out on, Costume Quest. Yeah, literally no one's talking about it. We found this out more on our own when we usually wait for our favorite YouTubers to talk about it. The series came out around March. I saw trailers for it around then. They sort of do like, oh, we're splitting season one into two parts, but when they release the second part, they're like, uh, we'll just call it season two. I mean, Disenchantment did the same thing. It's weird. Yeah. I mean, I'm just surprised it even became a thing because Costume Quest is an old video game. This is back from when I was, like, starting middle school type of a thing. Uh, the first game came out 2010. Yeah, so it's been nearly a decade. Yeah. Although there was a sequel that came out a few years later. Yeah. And that's when and Double Fine bought the series. But still, this is its first time actually getting a TV show to go with the game. Yeah, this is a video game TV show. Yeah, and like... And we all know how those end up. Insert clip of Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Like our model says, the customer was always wet. By the way, before we go any further, this is spoiler free. Yes, yeah, so this is more of a recommendation video because the series is rarely available on Amazon Prime and if you have it, we would totally recommend it. The only thing that would be stopping you is if you're the type of person that straight up refuses to watch holiday related things out of season. You know, but even then, it feels more like... I mean, it feels detached from the whole Halloween thing enough where you could still enjoy it as its own thing. Yeah, it's just that, like, y you know, like like how Courage Cowardly Dog, that feels very Halloween-y. Yeah. I guess I am sort of surprised that no one was talking about this because it seems like a show that you would hear people on the round table talk about. Well, you know how with Amazon Prime and not only that, just like, if you just look at the advertisements. The thing is with Amazon Prime is that they hardly, like, promote any of their, like, shows. Besides, like, the stuff for, like, little kids. Because I remember we were going to a theater once and one of the ads before the movie was just, like, all the Amazon Prime originals. It was just all stuff geared towards, like, really younger kids. Like that fucking dumbass would you give a mouse a cookie animated show yeah even though i would have loved that as a kid so it's don't sort feed rats you're supporting the vermin infestations <laughs> <laughs> the mouse that wants a cookie deserves a swift death from a mouse trap <laughs> anyway but yeah, um i feel like at lack of advertisement was one thing and, and another it thing it was on you know amazon prime no one really talks about the original stuff on there yeah because like amazon prime like it doesn't really have anything good or noteworthy it's really more feeling for like maybe like pbs type of stuff i don't know i feel like if the show was on actual tv or even netflix it will probably got more notoriety because like if this was a week by week thing or like one episode every several months like any other modern cartoon people would be more interested in it either way let's segue into like why it's actually good I guess for a quick synopsis of the series, because it sort of differs from the game, four kids stumble into a junk shop where they're gifted magical costumes in order to fight the monsters that lurk in their town. I guess off the top of my head, to name drop another obscure show, like some of the concepts remind me of Monster Allergy. Yeah. Especially yeah. with the whole like villain in plain sight sort of gimmick, where the big bad is just, you know, among humans but in a disguise. But you'd be surprised at like how grounded the story is like there's actually a consistent story that goes along and there's actual character development yeah and it's not like a monster of the week type of a thing but that's probably because it's an amazon prime thing not on actual tv yeah like even though they sort of do like the older mid 2000 things with cartoons where it's like it's 30 minutes but they split into two segments and a lot of the time just the episode just sort of flow one into another so like if they and it does like a bit of a smoother transition but i guess that was done for the sake of being able to binge the show right the show is just really good the character designs 
Um, like, one thing yeah. I do like to praise is that the games themselves try to go for like a comic booky style, but the style of the show does have like a lot of charm and tries to like mimic like old newspaper comics. Yeah. And like one thing you'll notice is that if something's like colored black, they'll usually have like a scribble instead of just a solid color. Right. Because that would be something that like an older comic does. I like when stuff like that just goes for actual different styles. Wow, like we also have held up on Netflix, it's sort of like the equivalent of that. We're going for a different animation type of a style. Yeah, and I showed Joey what the game looked like afterwards. He was like, oh, that's what they look like in the game? I did not remember their eyes looking that freaky. <laughs> it's like somebody figuring out how to do 3D with the eyes, but they sort of felt like, yeah, this looks good. Yeah, Joey did not like the character models in the original game. I'm just like, they, they did it so, like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but they did so much better in the cartoon <laughs> for the main characters that are just so generic looking. But when they actually have the costumes on and you get the external characters, especially the big bad, you know, that that's where the show really shows the character design. Yeah. And just a story, like I said before, it's the whole the bad guys in plain sight. So it gets kind of nerve-wracking even though the show goes for like a lot a lot more of a light-hearted tone. And it will hit you on a more deeper emotional level to a certain degree. Yeah, certain the characters times. do go through like various arcs. Yeah. Especially like the kids and like some of the adult characters that they meet along the way. Hun, you said that the game had like some wizard or something well given I, the costumes right i don't 100 percent remember but i do think that in the game itself they were gifted the costumes by an enchantress while in this game i was about to say this game while in the show itself they're given costumes by a figure that owns a junk shop named norm yeah and honestly i like that aesthetic more especially when there's something that happens with him yeah character development wise which is a lot better than just saying oh an enchantress just gave you the costumes since the series are wrapped up what do you think about the future of the show do you think that they should like continue it or do you think they sort of wrapped it up with a nice bow and we should leave it as is well the thing is is that this is one of those series that you're not really on the edge of your seat it's more something that like oh it's the halloween special for this year that's pretty cool even though the first half of the series came out in March. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, what's that um, Halloween special that aired like every year on Cartoon Network that had the werewolf, the... Um, Scary Godmother. Yeah, Scary Godmother. It's like, oh, that that's cool, like the first time you watch it, and then like next year it's on. It's just like, yeah, I got nothing else to do, watch it. I do know that the games had both a like, big story DLC and a sequel. I do hope that they use inspiration from either of those to like do another season or two because I do think the show is really great as is and I would like to see it progress into something even greater if they can. Yeah, if they can. I mean, they already went off of the groundwork, so... I'm not sure how they would be able to handle a second season. Well, a second story arc that isn't pre-planned, so... You never know what they can do. Yeah, exactly. What are your final thoughts? I guess final thoughts for the series as a whole is that you'll have a good time with it. I think it's attached enough from the whole Halloween aesthetic that you can watch it any time of year if you want to. And I feel like if you're a fan of like how shows are today, like Star vs. or Steven Universe, where it has a story-driven comedy show. As for me... I just say that you'll be very surprised what you're getting yourself into, especially since the internet slash social media isn't really blasting this everywhere. The full series is now available on Amazon Prime. I'm sure a lot of you have Amazon Prime already just due to free shipping. I mean, the way we really heard about it was more just that our Amazon TV had it as an advertisement. We were just like, let's check it out. I mean, I kind of forgot about the series after we watched the first half until like a few days before Halloween. I was like, oh yeah, the second part of season one or season two or whatever they want to call it came out. Woo! Anyway, this has been Snack Chats, a shorter episode today. You have a good night, good morning, whatever. 
please like, subscribe, comment, anything helps. And you guys have a good one. Hope you enjoyed your spoopy season.